Lawrence, um, that is an obstacle. Don't need to explain that to you. For insurance companies, for example, five years well, from now, can you get it down to 50 grand or less? Well, I think the price may come down, but it's going to be like a lot of technologies. You're going to see this technology continuing to advance, and it'll get smaller and lighter, and the pricing will change. Uh, think about the cell phones, the way they were 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago. So, yes, this is a, such an amazing new technology. Uh, the parameters will change for everybody. And, what, and in terms of insurance ever covering something like this, what's the likelihood? I think the likelihood is high because the, the amount of money we save in terms of reduction in medications and reduction in complications, this device probably pays for itself in about two years. In the United States, the Veterans Administration, 10 days after the FDA gave clearance, decided to provide these for veterans based on their own data showing the benefits. So there's a huge health benefit here. And we have already found a number of uh, U.S. insurers and German insurers that on a case-by-case -case basis have given this to people that have been injured at work so they can go back to work and go on with their life. And they're giving them to people in, uh, that have private insurance as well. So we as a company, one of our key initiatives is to build the data and the process for everyone to be able to get this reimbursed by the insurance carriers because of the value it provides. So, Lawrence, if the VA gets it, why don't more insurance companies get it? You've got if I'm correct, two American insurance companies do support the product, but the rest don't. Is that right? Well, we, we have a number of applications in. Uh, so far, we I believe a total of four American insurance companies have paid for these for people to use in everyday life, uh, and there's several more pending. So that number will keep growing on a case-by-case, on -case, week-by-week, uh, and state-by-state basis. Okay, but from a business standpoint, you know, your stock IPO to 12 bucks rocketed uh, now it's back down sort of in the $12 neighborhood, and uh, clearly anybody who got in after the IPO has probably lost some money. W what's, what's, what's to explain this? Is it, does it all come down to how many Americans have access to it? Because it's supported in Europe, for example, paid for there, paid for by the government health insurance system in Canada. Well, I think the initial uh, excitement on the stock is about the potential of exoskeletons. They are such incredibly life-changing products that people can understand how big it can be. And this market potential, if you look at the Wall Street Journal last November, sees this as a $2.2 billion market by the end of the decade. Uh, so the key to driving for anybody in the industry is going to be top-line growth, our ability to build the infrastructure so everyone can get these. Because they make such a difference uh, that, that the value is there, uh, we have to execute. For the last two quarters, you have missed analyst estimates. What's your game plan for turning that around? Our main focus has been uh, foundation building. So what we've done is hired a reimbursement team, and a lot of those people started with us in January and have been functioning uh, very effectively. That's why we've had some recent approvals. What we really need is for someone who has the need for an exoskeleton that we can handhold and take it all the way through the system for them with their insurance company, help them with their doctor, help them with the physical therapist, help all the filings uh, with the insurance companies so that they can complete it. And that process has taken a little longer than we thought. But we also gave annual guidance for the year, and we expect that uh, we will hit our guidance uh, for the year. We don't give quarterly guidance at this point.